multiple chemical substances are affected by alcohol. Marijuana, on the other hand. Dr. Nora Volkov is not your average general in the war on drugs. And so we have cannabinoid receptors all over our brain. Very often, the troops Volkov commands are kids. And the ammunition? Science. These receptors, which are covering these memory centers, are completely taken over by marijuana. And it was Volkov's curiosity as a young adult that ultimately led her to this battlefield. My big question always has been, how does the human brain work? It led me into an investigation that relates to brain changes in people that are addicted to drugs. Her path can only be described as extraordinary. From her childhood home in Mexico to medical school at the age of 18 and ultimately to the director's office at the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Nora Volkov was born in Mexico City, but her family tree stretches back across the Atlantic Ocean. I'm the second child of four girls. My parents both uh, came to Mexico when uh, they were very young. My father was uh, 12 years old. He came basically persecuted by Stalin. He was the grandson of Leon Trotsky. Volkov grew up in the house in Mexico City where her great-grandfather, Leon Trotsky, one of the leaders of the Russian Revolution, had been murdered by communist rivals. Her father turned it into a museum, with a young Volkov even leading tours on weekends. Volkov's mother also fled a totalitarian regime, Francisco Franco's Spain. When Franco took power, those that have fought against uh, Franco left Spain and actually were accepted in Mexico. So that's how come both of my parents ended up in Mexico. Russian Revolution on the one side, civil war on the other. Volkov's father was a chemist, so science was part of her childhood. I had on my father a scientist, and he had a big, big impression on me. On the other hand, on my mother, I have the artistic side, and I also very much uh, appreciate art. But it's undoubted that my father did play a role on me choosing a scientific career. She graduated first in her class at the National University of Mexico, receiving an award for the best medical student of her generation. But success did not always come easily. I guess that the main challenges were being uh, born um, a girl, but, but my father wanted boys, and so basically he trained us as boys. That notion of, no, you cannot do this, was something that I was trained to actually react to. It became a challenge. Of course, I can do anything that a man can do, and actually I can do it better. As a med student, she read about the first use of brain scans and found her calling. Volkov made her mark with groundbreaking research on drug addiction, using brain imaging to understand it in a whole new way. Her work helped establish what we now know, that addiction is a disease. As a disease, it is really remarkable to see how drugs can transform a human. We call it a slave. Something very profound has disrupted the function of the brain. And then I was fascinated, well, what is it? What's happening there? How can you profoundly affect behavior in such ways? She rose to leadership positions at the Department of Energy's Brookhaven National Laboratory on Long Island and was selected for membership in the National Academy of Sciences, always pursuing the big question, how the brain works. We've shown that basically one single protein, one protein, can profoundly affect your vulnerability to engage in compulsive drug taking, one single protein. That single protein is dopamine, and her research helped establish the key role it plays. Now we can actually do imaging technologies and look inside the human brain. Volkov dedicates a good deal of her time to educating teens about the harsh realities of addiction. And why is this important during adolescence? She's focused on investing in the next generation. It may lead you to engage on risky behaviors that can have very adverse consequences such as experimenting with drugs. It's an educated kid that cannot find a job is actually a lost opportunity. Our main investment right now is the capacity for creativity of every single individual. And if those individuals are educated, you want to be able to absorb that creativity because that will make us all, all be much better than where we are now. The challenge of doing something against odds, doing something that could help others, that could make an impact. 
I do believe that each one of us can contribute in one way or the other. And I think that through science, I can help those that may be less fortunate. I always say we have this gigantic brain, we have this gigantic frontal cortex that is developed in order to come up with solutions. The easiest thing to say is, no, you cannot do it. The challenge is to find a way to do it. Technology will create, could create, a robot that looks great and acts to open exactly like the school right? Do you think that there the is something essential to the test? I can't, I was